Afternoon, Little Bullets for Life. Uh, we have a box opening. Uh, I just received this from NidibyUSA.com. Uh, Let's go ahead and see what we got inside. Okay, first of all, we got the uh, three hole uh, turret for the uh, uh, Progressive 1000 Lee. And what else do we got in here? Uh, let's see, it looks like maybe bullets. Can't tell. Hmm. I'll have to open that up. And, oh, this is the brass. These are the uh, uh, the H32 uh, H&R uh, Magnum brass. And um, these were a little cheaper than the uh, Hornady's. These are from Starline Brass. And of course, we have the uh, the the three uh, die set carbide uh, for the uh, 32. H&R Magnum. Let's go ahead and open it up. Let's see what we and have. Uh, here we have the uh, the dies, and uh, it's got the shelf foot as well. Beautiful. It's got the new uh, ratchet type uh, locking rings. That's great. And uh, let's go ahead and look at some of the data here on the uh, the manual it comes with. Overall length as well, and uh, low data here. It's going to be handy. A lot of the powders are not common, uh, you know, uh, where in my area, uh, a lot of the uh, foreign European type powders. All right, Lee mold. This is a two cavity mold, and it's the uh, 100 grain round nose. And so I'm hoping that uh, when I put the uh, uh, the mixed lead in there, it'll go be about maybe anywhere from 108 to 110 grain. I wanted to get as close to uh, 115 as possible, so if I can get 108 to 110, that'd be perfect. You know, I'll be happy with that. This way, I can use the load data for the uh, the 115 grain cast bullet. And we have some uh, Hornady XTP 100 rounds of uh, 100 grain hollow points. I couldn't find the 85 grainers; they didn't have any out of they were out of stock. So I opted with the 100 grain. They had 110 grain, but for the 32 uh, H&R Magnum, I'm going to go with the uh, 100 grain. Um, you know, this, this should work just fine. Okay, guys, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, put the components together. And then from there, we'll go ahead and uh, start uh, setting up the uh, Lee Progressor 1000. And then uh, start uh, melting some lead and get this mold into uh, reduction here. Okay, let's look at some of the data we have here for the uh, 32 H&R Magnum. I'm really excited about loading this caliber because um, I believe 32 H&R uh, Magnum suffices for uh, most of your 32 caliber needs as far as handguns go and even uh, carbines right. for that matter. And these are the Sterling Brass. Wow, nice and bright, beautiful. Virgin Brass. The uh, lead bullets are coming out really good. Um, up to temperature. Bottom, bottoms are all filled out pretty good. I think about a little over 200 of them. Quite a pile of shiny bullets there. 32 caliber, 100 grain, round nose, 314 diameter. Once we uh, get the uh, bullets finished, we're going to do some weights and measurements.
nice and shiny. It's a balmy night right now. It's uh, like 80 degrees here, and it's uh, almost nine o'clock at night. Now I'm hoping that these uh, bullets will come out a little heavier. Uh, they normally do. I never had a lead mold that actually was on the nose. You see anywhere from four to ten grains uh, higher than the specifications list. And uh, I'm looking for a heavier bullet for the uh, 32 H&R uh, Magnum. And uh, get a, a 3 inch uh, Ruger to uh, get over maybe 1,050 feet per second. I saw some loads there with uh, power pistol too. Four grains of power pistol uh, went over close to uh, 1050 to 1100 feet per second on a 115 grain bullet. So. I'm hoping these will be like 108 grain. So it looks like we've got about maybe 200 or so here. So what I'm going to do is, you know, check them out. Make sure they're um, wrinkle-free with no defects on them. Okay, no spurs. Filled out bottoms, of course. We don't want any rounded bottoms. All right. I checked out most of them before uh, filming, so uh, I got rid of most of the... Uh, now this one here has a small hole in it, but uh, that shouldn't be no problem. All right. Actually, we can do weights and measurements now. Okay, let's go ahead and start it up. We'll do about three of them and uh, check the weight. 104. Wow, not bad. Hundred and three point nine. Wow, pretty consistent. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, measure them out here. Well, this is measuring out at three twelve. Okay, so we're all done with our bolts here. Came out really, really beautiful. We'll go ahead and stack them up on the uh, tray. We'll do a uh, traditional lube on them. There's something about pan lubing bullets. It just makes the uh, cartridges look more retro. And I learned something about powder coating versus uh, traditional lube. Uh, traditional lube is uh, great for most applications. And uh, not that... Um, Powder coat doesn't have its uses or applications as well, but when it comes to um, a better seal in the barrel, um, better velocity and accuracy, I use the uh, up for the uh, traditional lube. Now again, with the uh, 9mm, 45, those cartridges like that, or the automatics, I uh, I highly recommend powder coating. Yeah, it works really good, really good. But as far as like, revolvers go, when they have to be swaged down. Uh, like three times before you can get out the barrel. Uh, traditional lube's better. So an oversized bullet with a little bit of lube on it. We'll go down the uh, cylinder throat to the forcing cone and into the uh, rifling of the gun. And then uh, out it goes. So basically it starts out with a 358. Say for example you're shooting 38 special or 357. And basically uh, at the other end the bullet comes out to be a 35 4 or 35 2 depending on the uh, type of uh, handgun you have, Smith & Wesson, Ruger, the Colt, etc. Your old homemade lube, Vaseline, Camel Wax, and a little bit of uh, transmission fluid. Alright, we'll let that sit for about 30 minutes.
I was able to fit 82 on this tray here. All right, we're gonna take the first one that we did and push those out. Oops. A little cracking sometimes, but that gets heavy. I may have put too many on there. All right, let's go ahead and put the um, dies on the uh, three old turret. Um, my uh, way of doing it is always put the expander on first and the reason for that is so I can put the uh, Lee auto drum measure on it and while you're spinning around you don't smack into the other, the other dies and then from there you can make your adjustments um, you're gonna put it on your uh, your Lee Bracer 1000 and later you'll add your uh, spanner die, decapper, and your uh, seating die as well. This comes off, of course, this is actually your, you know, the design for your funnel. If you don't have a, uh, a auto uh, drum uh, measure. And, uh, you know, for an extra 40 bucks, these are worth the investment. Uh, most people, yeah, just use the regular old uh, electronic scale and, you know, powder scoop. That works too, you know, if you want to take your time. But I, f I found these quite reliable, and so, you know, I don't have no problem using them. All right, so we got the dies set up, and we made about four samples over here. And, uh, sorry about the noise, guys. Garage work again, as usual. Okay. And they're crimped, right in the crimp groove there. 102 grain uh, Lee round nose, traditional loop. And uh, I'm going to be uh, single staging the uh, primer system. Uh, all right, there we go. And I like to get rid of the excess lube off it. Nice and shiny. Beautiful. So it's a 100 grain Lee round nose and it weighs out uh, to 104 grain, give or take uh, half a grain uh, with the uh, homemade lubricant on it. One at a time. Well, I make about 100 of these guys, not too many. Now, one thing I learned about these uh, 32 H&R dies, uh, when you start to expand the neck on them, it feels like a rifle. You know, if you don't lubricate the inside of the uh, neck on the uh, rifle sh uh, shell, it gets kind of stuck in there. This is how these feel. And so basically what's happening is that these uh, 32 h and uh, shells are a little bit thicker than your normal uh, 32 uh, coat long. They have to uh, operate at a much higher pressure. Hence the uh, thicker breasts. And guys, it's uh, 85 degrees and it's uh, 8 o'clock at night, summertime in California. Yeah, as you can probably hear the, uh, the uh, metal tension screeching as I try to uh, bring the ram down. Guys, there's nothing like a big box of homemade... 32 caliber bullets. As you can see, uh, struggling trying to get the uh, shell out of the uh, expander ball. I'll die. So guys, I'm enjoying uh, making these uh, 32 h and magnums with cast bullets and on hand powder. You know. I would like to get me a new pistol, uh, maybe a single shot uh, Ruger single six in the 32 H uh, and R. I don't think they make them anymore, but um, they come on with the uh, single seven now. But it has the fancy adjustable sights, seven and a half inch barrel. I need something that looks pretty retro, like the uh, old Rugers do. Not that the uh, new Rugers are uh, any worse, but they're great guns, of course. They just kind of lack that. Um, like the heart, so to speak, when it comes to single action uh, 
army revolvers. You know, I mean, you know, back in the day, they didn't have adjustable sights and uh, all these fancy uh, accoutrements that go with it, scopes and everything. It was mono e mono back in those days. The quicker you are with that steel, the better chance of surviving. And I think, um, from my experience as well, with the lighter, smaller calibers and the smaller guns, you can actually draw them pretty quick and uh, fire off your round as accurate, as really accurate as well. There's no recoil. Double actions are pretty smooth. Uh, by the way, guys, I uh, <laughs> did the Fourth of July shoot with my uh, my wife, and uh, uh, unfortunately. Uh, guys, um, uh, the reason why it was so cheap, it was six bucks a person versus fifteen, is because you don't get the same kind of um, service there. Basically, it's go in and get out. That's basically how they work it. So basically, you got people lined up to get in for every two hours. So our time window was um, uh, ten to twelve. So when we got there, they had a big old. Um, we call that uh, mar marker board and it had our name on it on the de time and on the date and on the lane we're supposed to be on so I paid for two people but unfortunately they give you one lane the only way to get another lane for your partner is to have that other person uh, uh, pay separately other than that we, we still had a good time we had an hour for the fun I was just enjoying watching her shoot and uh, she loved that little uh, <laughs> SP-101 Ruger and uh, it was easy for her to load. She loves my uh, Smith & Wesson MMP-40 and you know comparing apples to oranges I mean that thing was day and night. You see a little 32 with uh, Smith & Wesson uh, cartridges out of that uh, SP-101 then you shoot full powered 180 grain uh, defense loads out of your uh, MMP-40 and cool. Big difference, and I, and I asked, told my wife that, hey, uh, wouldn't you like to shoot this one? She goes, I like this one too, but I like it something a little bit more power. I'm like, okay, a little more power, huh? But I enjoyed, you know, shooting one-handed with that little revolver. It was just so fun, and so I, I saw the benefits in having a light gun, a lower, smaller caliber that shoots accurate and true, and uh, your chance of hit hit probability and survival probability are are likely high. Most people, you know, unless you're proficient with uh, heavy caliber guns like 40 cal, 45 ACP, things like that, um, you know, your chances are better off just using a a small lighter gun and getting your shots off as uh, accurately as, and quickly as possible in an emergency situation. And so, you know, learning having that little pistol, I learned a lot about small handguns and. I started thinking about the guys who used to carry derringers and little pocket pistols like that, you know, back in the uh, Wild West, along with their main 45 Colts and all. But yeah, those little handguns came in quite handy in a pinch. All right, we're down to the last shell. Put the last charge in and see if it. Registers 3.9. Let me re-zero that again. Wow, 3.9 guys. Pretty consistent with that uh, Lee Auto Drum. All right, let's go ahead and uh, load this last one up, and then uh, we'll get to the review. And there we have it. 100 rounds of 32 H&R. 104 grain lead round nose Federal small pistol primer or CCI Virgin uh, brass from Starline and 3.9 grains of Alliant unique The whole part half the part of it is all building up these loads and The next part will be to test them out which I'll be doing in a couple of weeks. Um, I have a uh, reservation for the counting range and uh, we'll try those uh, rounds out. So see if they can break about nine, 
or I'm sorry, 10, 1050 or so. Uh, this is not a max load. 4.4 is a max load. This is 3.9. So um, we'll see how accurate and uh, if it needs to be uh, watered down a little bit, we'll find out. But out of a Ruger uh, SP-101 or even any kind of Ruger pretty much, uh, they hold up pretty well, you know, with the pressures and all. And this is just a lead bullet. It's not a high-performance magnum round. So, anyways, guys, lead bullets for life here. Thanks for joining me today. Hope to see you again soon because we're going to do these uh, test shoots in a couple of weeks. And from there, we'll see the results of my uh, finished product. You folks have a good Sunday. Enjoy the rest of the week. Take care. And we'll see you at the next video. Bye for now.